hello and welcome to Pillars of Eternity 2, Deathfire. And I really love the first one. It is clearly one of the best RPG games ever made, and uh, Obsidian makes amazing RPG games. So, I don't think this game needs introduction. Uh, let's just get started. <clears throat> and I suppose I should talk about the options I'm gonna use a little bit. There are five difficulty settings. I played uh, the first game on Path of the Damned as well. And I think Veteran is gonna be a decent starting point. It's gonna give us a little bit of room for error. Not too much, but it should be just fine. Maybe I'm gonna go for another playthrough <clears throat> after that uh, with Path of the Damned. That wasn't my first uh, playthrough with Path of the Damned. So it should be fine. I'm not gonna go for uh, Iron Man or Expert Mode. But I, I'm gonna turn on uh, level scaling, but only upwards. I don't wanna stomp whatever I find, but I do want uh, the world to be to stay challenging, so to speak. <clears throat> and this, this is definitely a preference. Maybe the other way around is a bit more immersive. Also, it can give you a bit of a power trip, but I actually prefer uh, challenge. Uh, over that. So, let's just get started. Aora, a world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a watcher, one who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions, waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual, a seemingly immortal agent of the gods, known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos. Ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected. That the ancient Empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cadnua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Sounds like a job well done. What could go wrong? Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to gnaw at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. That maybe the gods weren't finished with us.
last the trouble with dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. So you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. Was I? You have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. A watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked. So we're seeing a bit of a flashback from uh, the first game. The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? House. That smug bastard. Let the world <clears throat> see. Let them decide what to do. I remember. Okay. Take me, Big Stone. Leo has turned again, Watcher. Come. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. Hmm. <clears throat> I have to say that I really like the... the narrator. Usually, the usual approach is like some guy with a monotone voice uh, trying to read the whole thing, but that's not what we have here, and I like it. <clears throat> you can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved Mary Gore, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Alright, you're one ugly dwarf, but I'm not gonna judge. Can we the talk? The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives you a courteous nod. Sit. Please. She insists. I can just leave. Apparently I can't. <clears throat> Let's play some cards. Apparently. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cadnua. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. Hmm. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. 
Your brush with the divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Mm. So we examine the card to choose our legacy. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. The thing is, I didn't have one playthrough in uh, Poe, so I don't know what I'm gonna go with. The last option is actually the most interesting one. You did everything wrong. <clears throat> you pledged to do the bidding of every god and then scattered the souls of the Hollowborn to, random, to a random location. You got every companion killed. You got the worst outcome for every quest. If there is a mistake you could have made while still resolving the Hollowborn crisis, you made it. <laughs> Not suggested for new players. That sounds like a fun playthrough. <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious if you can mess it up so hard in the uh, Poe. I may I have to admit I did actually read these things just to say just to see how the uh, like just to set the game uh, the settings properly and actually the first fun is the one I think we have to go with in Pillars of Eternity you return the, the lost Hollowborn souls to Deerwood's children as you had pledged to Hylia. You were kind and merciful to people you encountered. Mostly sympathetic to their pain and charitable to those who needed help. Yeah, uh, that's mostly me. That's not exactly true. I like think it's my approach is basically between fair and balanced and benevolent soul. Hmm. Yeah, definitely not that. Either fair or balanced or benevolent. I don't think I was be that benevolent. So I'm a little bit hesitant to uh, click that. But yeah, let's just go with benevolent. I think that's uh, more correct to say. Does everything appear to be in order? I suppose... You just really confronted how uh, goody goody I was in the first game. Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Vera. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. <clears throat> so, Barat is the god of death. Uh, we know that from the first game. Okay. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? Yes. I spoke with the other gods in the Hall of Stars and pledged myself to them. Hylia was the only one that was not crazy, so I can justifiably pick her. You did. She places a card on the table. Showing a tall tower with the gods' constellations arrayed around it in the sky. She places a card in the middle of the arrangement. A bell tower with no bell. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced watcher to find him. Am I dead? No. But neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood, but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. That is, until I return you. 
She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Well, then let's get on with it, I suppose. I would like to live again and uh, uh, deal with this guy who destroyed my castle, Yotas. Good. Before you return to Aeora as my herald, you must remember who you were. The last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Character creation. And this is where I probably spent some time already. Because this is the uh, the place I just get stuck all the time when it comes to games like this. And I already have a pretty good idea of what I want to be. There are characters that interest me more than others. And I think I'm just gonna be a... A pale elf. A single class. I'm mostly interested about wizard and cypher, but I, I wouldn't really mind going for a more of a fighter approach as well like not not necessarily talking about the fighter but like mainly just dealing damage with physical weapons <clears throat> i think i'm just gonna be a wizard just for the flexibility yeah and and the wizard has a lot of options cypher is more like a uh well cypher does uh hit the enemies quite a bit yeah, let's just get going with this. Uh, yep, yeah, we're gonna be a wizard. Not specialized wizard, because specializing is actually not the best. You actually sacrifice a lot. You sacrifice uh, two out of five spell schools. And uh, even the the rest, you are, you are worse at casting. It takes lo longer time to cast those spells. So it's not, not really that good. I think I'm just gonna go with Chill Fog. I I wanna check these out a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, Chill Fog is, uh, is a decent option if you have to pick only one. And look at these. So, the wizards really benefit from intelligence and might. Intelligence affects aura effect and ability duration. And might affects damage, healing, fortitude. So how are we gonna do this? Resolve is not important, uh, nor is constitution. And I think Resolve is not exactly a dumb stat by any means. <clears throat> but we can somewhat treat it that way. Yeah. And we can only drop it to free. This means we're gonna get hit more. And possibly gonna get cr uh, critted more, but uh, accuracy affects not only the accuracy of our <clears throat> melee attacks and ranged attacks, but also spells. So everything you do, you do you need accuracy for that? And uh, action speed obviously is a good thing, but it's not as important as having uh, area effect and ability duration and whatnot. <clears throat> so this is fine. And Constitution, I'm gonna keep it at, at, at least base level. So we're not gonna get blown up. I'll just get some extra intelligence. Uh, this is the Origin, Ord Valia. Well, Old Valia is, uh, is now the crumbled remnants of an empire of warring merchant nations. I don't care too much about reading it, and we can just be an artist, just to get some insight here. <clears throat> Either I either make characters like this, or I just uh, basically randomize them completely. Uh, but yeah, I already have an idea of what I want her to be. And she's gonna be more like a, a journalist mage. Uh, which actually sounds pretty fun to me. We gotta go with sticks. And there's only one picture uh, that could even potentially uh, fit her. 
Yeah, let's go with that. I don't want to uh, change her Quick a lot. And quiet. Yeah. Uh, let us end this. Attack. Bring them. Show them how it's done. Easy does it. After him. Time to see and not be seen. I'll teach you a lesson. Hey there. I got this. I uh, yeah. They'll never know I'm here. Yeah. I got this. I. Ugh. Show them how it's done. I don't know. Let's go. My eyes are peeled. I like a feisty and smooth. <laughs> we can also change your pose. This is the average, heroic, hunched, roguish, sassy, stoic, sullen. I think average is pretty uh, reasonable pose. Now, her, her basic... Well, her default name is Watcher. And I'm not sure I'm gonna change that. Because thing is, everyone would know you as the Watcher, and it, it kind of makes sense. So I can give her a special name, but I feel like everyone would know her as the Watcher, so... I think that name actually makes sense. <clears throat> and before the whole ordeal, she wasn't like well-known or anything. So she's known as the Watcher, that is what... Uh, Makes her special, I suppose. If she had a name before, like, she definitely did. Like, that that is, in a way, long forgotten for most people. <clears throat> anyway, let's just go next. So, she's gonna be a wizard. Arcane power source, el elf, uh, and this looks fine. But this is just, uh, yep, looks like a fun, fun character to play. Chill Fox start. Sure. Uh, yeah, let's go next. I'm ready. Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. Sounds good. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf hovering nearby. Yeah. <clears throat> um, no, no need to worry, okay? I I'm leaving. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. Okay. They actually look different now. A little different. So that's a bummer. Hmm. How do we kill a god? Who also has part of my soul. Uh, that's the good question here. You sense the steward's, steward's spirit in the bust, but she's unaware of you. <clears throat> Goosebumps rise on Eder's arms at your approach, but he seems unaware of your presence. How long did it? How long ago was the, the attack? Your body <clears throat> feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull.
Yeah. Continue. Well, we are basically... Uh, would have never uh, waken up. Would have never waken up without uh, without uh, Barrett's help. The the God of Death help helped us quite a bit. Okay, continue. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? What? Stop being weird, Edder. Um... Um... You know, just imagine this. Just show up in people's room and uh... Oh my god, you're awake! Just act all surprised when they wake up in the morning Just to try to uh, hide the creepiness of you like standing Well, I mean not, not standing, but like sitting uh, right next to them <laughs> Watching them sleep Edder, I'm on to you How are you feeling? Uh, who are you? Don't I know who you are? Well, I feel alive I'm in a lot of... I got a hell of a headache I don't... Intend to complain, but yep, yeah, it is how it goes. That might have been me. I've been slapping you a little harder each day, trying to wake you. What? How is that supposed to work? Okay. You've seen how pale I am? I'm gonna be like a smurf. Okay, don't we have like a medic on board? Or at least anyone sensible to tell you not to punch me in my sleep? I never dreamed it'd work. Adair stares with disbelief at what would likely be his slapping hand, examining both sides. He shrugs. Well, I'm really glad you're taking credit for this. Uh... Well, at least I'm I'm glad you're glad that I'm up, I guess. Well, you owe me. <clears throat> sure, I owe you one. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Yeah. Like, it's gonna be a tough one to make this any weirder, uh, Stuart. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Fair enough. Why did we bring that creepy statue? I, I suppose that was the only good thing about the destruction of Cad Nua. Is that that statue that I just assumed that we can't get rid of. Is now destroyed. But now we have it. And I apparently have it. In my personal chamber, watching over me. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Okay. Uh, imagine like having the immortal soul of your grandma, or at least somebody's grandma, as a statue in your room, non stop. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. Really? We're chasing him right now? That's crazy. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Still. <clears throat> I suppose at this point we just don't care. All the little things that a lot of people worry about. When you lift things, you no longer give them a second thought. 
I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. I know. Really? I, I really don't know that. I'm just gonna remain silent. Misfortune's brewing topside with... Migrants fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Hey, Eld Engrim. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. Great! Pirates! Perfect! What, what are we waiting for? Let's go. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He indicates a nearby wardrobe. Thanks. You gotta wait for me to get my gear. Okay. I guess you were dressing me while I was sleeping. Anyway. Um, sure. All right. Now make some use of it. Sure, I figure it out. Mail armor, fine. Let's equip it. Rod. Quarterstaff. Vetted Grimoire. Can I use that? Oh, that's food. Never mind that. The pirates of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Okay. So. Are you ready for this, uh, Adder? I think we're ready, I guess. <clears throat> At least I think so. Are you gonna come? I can't can't click on him. Do I need to armed and talk? suited up. We gotta get on deck. Alright. Let's go. Don't have to tell me twice. Well. What have we here? A little sloop? Lost and alone in the storm? Oh! No narrator? Ooh, this is my chance! A surly, brutish looking captain stands stiff back before his crew. He scowls as he assesses you, his hair whipping about his ears in the wind. I'll be taking your ship now. If you don't mind, and especially if you do. What's up with the cape, Superman? Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. The captain shrugs in the sheeting rain before pinning you with a slow, murderous grin. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody and agonizing, sure. But at least it'd be quick. Pirates? I don't have any quarrel with you. Why do you want my ship? Well, he's a greedy pirate. <laughs> Make a rude hand gesture. Pirates? Nah, I can't, can't miss it. In the blood and flesh. I, that I am. And you, you're a dead woman. Benvet. You're missing a great business opportunity here. You can also take us as slaves. Like a two for one. Now then. Me and my mates will be helping ourselves to your ship. There's no need to see her sunk by the storms. Or my culverins. With a grunt, with a, with a grunt he nods towards the port cannons. Listen up, mates. He cracks his neck as he addresses his crew. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. What? You're just gonna bugger off in the middle of a raid? I'm not even sure how this is called. I don't know what to call it. You're about to steal my ship, or at least uh, intend to. Play with a crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You had bad with after him. Uh oh. Okay, here we go. Uh, time to do my skill. Oh. 
Okay, let's just free some pirates. Adair? Oh, Adair is gonna... Okay, let's hit this pirate. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Okay. Is that AoE? It looks like it. Yeah, it, it was AoE. Alright, kill the pirates! What? Did we lose people? It does look like it. Storm's picking up. Seriously? The guy just left? That's insane. Do I have any other companions from the first game? <clears throat> Narrator, you gonna give me something? Or do I go for it? Nope. You've defeated the pirates, but you're not out of trouble yet. The storm picks up, lashing your ship and driving you dangerously close to a rocky shore. The Defiance crew hurries to reduce sail and batten down the hatches. They work quickly, but the ship is still listing heavily. Just then, a loose crate tumbles toward you, gathering speed on a, the rain-slick deck. It misses you, but knocks Chiputak, one of your deckhands, off his feet. The Defiant heaves. Chiputak pitches over the side. He grabs onto the rail, but his fingers are slipping. He cries out for help. Meanwhile, the runaway crate totters on the edge of the deck, ready to plunge overboard. You recognize the symbol on the front and realize it likely contains the salvage from Cad Nua, your keep. I'm gonna save Chiputek! I don't know what's in that crate, it could be just nothing. <clears throat> I don't know Chiputek, but hey, I'm not gonna kill people for a crate of mystery loot. <clears throat> you grab Chiputek's arm, just as his uh, grip fails. For a tense moment he hangs suspended over the roiling sea. Then with a mighty tug you pull him back onto the deck. That might really uh, works out for me. You hear a heavy splash. The crate from Cat Nua is gone. Chiputek, meanwhile, nods in gratitude and hurries to his station. Meanwhile, the storm has nearly driven you ashore. A flash of lightning reveals a treacherous coastline and Eotas striding into the distance. The lookout barely has time to shout a warning before the Defiant runs a the ground. The impact hurls you from the deck and into the froth of waves, bodies and splintering debris. You struggle toward the beach just ahead and even as the surf tugs you toward the open sea, you kick and paddle with all your might until at last you feel sand between your fingers. Pulling yourself ashore, you collapse. So, it's an unfortunate turn of events, but I guess at least I got my soul back, at least partially, and uh, we're not dead. And hey, Edder made it. Does this mean that everybody else is dead? Perhaps. <clears throat> uh, you've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I'd have woke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. What happened to the narrator? <laughs> Anyhow... Uh, Adder, you need to stop watching me sleep. <clears throat> Adder runs his fingers through his hair and removes a strand of seaweed he finds lodged there. He examines it closely and then tosses it onto the sand. If you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. He points at the Defiant, despite it being difficult to miss from your vantage point. So far, it's just you and me and the chair lady over there. 
That a nose towards something further up the beach. You mean the statue? It's a relief to see you awake, my lady. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Your steward appears to be lodged between some rocks. Despite this, her tone is warmly cheerful. Is it though? How could we not lose that statue? That was literally one thing we need to get rid of from Cadnua to make that place the best. Yet we still have it. I hate boats? Nah, I love boats. What happened? That's a bit of a dumb question. Where are we? Don't know, but it's real pretty. Are you smoking your pipe? <laughs> Aren't, don't we give a damn about the survivors? All around us? Difficult to say for certain. The dead fire is spotted with islands. Some quite small. The good news is that if the storm hasn't spun us round entirely, I'd say we're in charted waters. I believe the Valian Trading Company operates in the region. Nice. I know about them a little bit. Hence that little visit from that wretched pirate captain. Any help here, Barat? <laughs> Priest of Barat. Well, that's not gonna... Well, it's worth a try. There's no reply save for the calling of gulls and the constant crash of the water upon the shore. Uh, I'd shout for Aethys, but I'm worried he'd hear me and come over. <laughs> oh. What do we do now? Yeah, sure, I'm gonna ask that. It is your decision, but Aethys still holds a piece of your soul. He was moving inland last I saw of him. I rather think he will have been hard to miss. Yeah, but we probably need to uh, have a, like, a proper plan. Not just chase him. That's not really a plan, is it? Like, not plan how to find him, but plan how to take the souls back or at least kill him. Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we gotta get the ship repaired. I don't wanna be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. Yeah, that's just suicide. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. That's not that's not a bad idea. My lady, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? Squint dramatically while looking at the ocean. I returned as the Herald of Barat. I am on a special mission to find Eotas and learn what his plans are. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, no, no. The third is okay. Barat has given me a sacred duty. I'm to hunt the Otas for the other gods. My soul has passed into the beyond and Barat gave me a choice. Find the Otas or die. No, that's, that's the fourth one is the best. Oh, I'm gonna say it again. <clears throat> Squint dramatically while looking at, at the ocean. I've returned as the Herald of Barat. I'm on a special mission to find the Otis and learn what his plans are. Let's go. Sure. I suppose if any mission could be considered special, it'd have to be this one. <laughs> I love the conversation options. And you have a lot of them. That's so great. That's very refreshing. A perilous endeavor indeed. Castle or no castle, you are still my lady. And I will aid you to the best of my ability. Okay. Thanks for that. Well, I suppose we better get a move on. And I have to do some my own. No, 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 no. That's just uh, for those who want to solo the game, I suppose. Let's go. That's not me. Ooh, okay. Choose, this, choose a single cast or multi-class for this companion. This choice cannot be changed later. Ooh, do I want him to be a fighter or a rogue or both? We might want him to be a fighter and by fighter maybe a tank. We might need a tank. I think you probably need like one or two guys who can take some damage. In my experience. We're probably gonna get a six man party and you need at very least one guy who can tank. And Adair could be the guy. And and this will most likely make him 
indispensable. Like, he's gonna be a must-have. I think we're just gonna go with Fighter. What do you need? He has knocked down, and that's all he has. I don't think we have anything that could help us here. Of course. Okay. Oh. Just take it all. One handed dagger. Okay, we can't leave that woman up there. <clears throat> the Defiant is looking far worse for wear after its unexpected landfall. The hole has splintered in several places along the keel while the tattered sails stand as evidence of your battle with the pirates. The deck of uh, the Defiant is well out of reach from here. The ship groans like a beached whale each time the waves roll in, but it doesn't seem to be listing further. You may be able to climb up. Scale the hole by hand. Use the grappling hook! One good throw. And the hook sails up and over the rail, catching firmly. A few tucks suggest that the grappling hook should hold fast. Let's climb up! The rope makes the ascent considerably easier, and you soon find yourself climbing up over the rail. Great! Irina! With two R's? How do you say that? Irina! Uh, what's going You're on? looking better, Casita. That or I'm worse off than I thought. <laughs> the sheen of sweat on her brow and the uh, one cast to her features bellies Irena's casual greeting. Hmm. It's my leg, Matiko. It hurts even worse than it looks. Irena's leg bears a bloody gouge along the length of her skin and the swelling around her knee suggests a nasty break. Hang on, I carry you back down? What is that? Survival 2? Craft a splint from the debris, I'll patch you up best as I can. But you'll want to stay off the leg as much as possible? 15 might and 2 athletics? I think she needs that because that's a longer... Well, not really a long term, but like... A solution more like I'm just carrying her off. I'm gonna uh, craft your splint. I wasn't planning on going for a run, Casita. Arena watches you work uh, with obvious relief. Once you're through, she gives the leg a uh, tentative stretch. Uh, it still hurts, but I can manage from here. Agrasima, have you found any of the others yet? Not yet. I'll start a fire. If any of the others are out there, hopefully they'll see it and turn up. And there, this is what I'm talking about. If you instead look for survivors, instead of wa watching me sleep on the shore, uh, this would have not happened. Or, I don't know. At least uh, she would have been saved earlier. Okay, at least she can move. Uh, let's go. What? We gotta climb down, obviously. Leather armor. Yeah, I suppose we're taking that. What? Can I go there? Oh. I managed to pause by accident. Some kind of sponge. Am I mistaken, or...? Yeah. Okay. I do like the map the game has. Small shields. What's up with you, mate? Hope the rest of those sodden bastards made it. Um, he's a spirit now. <clears throat> okay, Irina is f 
fine. Just the sword. Am I getting stuff into my potty stash? I am. I prefer that very much so. Aldengrim! And uh, Vela. My flame burns yet. Welcome, guys. Eld Engram appears to be in sound condition, though his vax jacket is soaked through. He appraises you with bleary-eyed amusement. You woke just in time for the fun. Fighting off motherless raiders one moment, <sighs> flung into the freezing depths of Ondra's bosom the next. Engram's eye twitches as he flashes a smile notable for its extraordinary absence of teeth. <laughs> Hi. Magran learns us poor bastards that a little excitement's good for the heart. The last Magranite to travel with me almost went mad because of his... goodest trials? Goddess trials. Yeah. Aye. But almost mad ain't fully mad. <laughs> ah, old Durance. The goddess shan't forge another like him in our lives, Captain. Okay. Can we go back on the ship now? Oh, you're not a kid! Bella rocks back on the heels of her feet, watching you both. Or is she a kid? Shouldn't you be helping? Oh, but I am, Captain. I pray for the dent to test ourselves anew against the pirates. We'll nay let them slip away a second time. Sounds good, Elden Grim. You're still drunk, aren't you? Dry as kindling, Watcher. His beard provides some cover for his smile, but his eyes twinkle playfully. Well, uh, don't let Engrim be a bad influence while I'm gone, okay? That's unkind. You're the one decided to pluck this wean from the wilds of Air Glanforth. Blame that stone steward of yours for bringing the furry maid along. What? You can't just call her the fire maid. However, that is amazing. I have to admit that. But I don't know how I feel about me calling her the fire maid. Uncle Engram, you promised me ale. And she's a drunk. Later, sweetie. Uncle Engram's thirsty too. He absentmindedly taps on his chest near his heart. Something the tongue of something metal beneath the priest's jacket. Well, I guess we found them and we got a furry maid. It's truly a dream come true. I'll boil up some water. So uh oh, we so we um I can also turn on AI. Hmm. Why is that the other way around? Okay. Good fight. Sure. What? Another spirit? Come on. Hey there, come with me. Hey. Fancy seeing you here. The spirit's voice raps and shifts, muted as if by a great distance. Even so. He grins brightly at you. I can't see much of anything really, apart from you. Just endless grey. What happened? I'm afraid you didn't make it. It's weird. I thought death would be different. Big light and so on. But I don't see anything at all. Just you. Vera charged me with guiding souls to the afterlife, so I suppose you're my responsibility now? I guess we can go with that. Oh. Suppose that sounds nice enough. I'll follow you then, shall I? Yep, yeah, sure. The spirit falls into step behind you, radiating cheer. Still seeing ghosts, huh? I suppose you're st Oh, okay. I saw him first. Yeah. 
Bye, piggy. What is this? I'm gonna heal up? Yeah, I healed up to full. I'm not sure how the system works. Poe had a very interesting system. Launcher, over here. But it seems like they changed it a little bit. Wow, the map is pretty damn detailed. Even even has the guy standing there. Okay, Chip Chiputek! He's alive! It is good to see you well, Watcher. I believe the boars were hoping for easy meat. If he's gonna be a companion, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> or at least a somewhat relevant character. The bosun, Beodal, is in that cave over there. Ran in after a boar. Stubborn old dwarf. I, I find him, okay, Chiputek? Don't worry. I will make for the campfire. I must get this pistol cleaned if it's going to be of any use. Be careful in there, Captain. I will be. Sea cave. Okay. Uh, I'll check out the cave. Hmm. Well, at least someone made it, I suppose. And now we have to deal with pirates as well. Oh, is this gonna be a big cave? Could be. Perhaps. This is the perfect time to take a break, so thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.